I am Michael. And I'm Cherise. We post weekly videos all about personal branding, your career and money management. And we're helping young professionals like yourself transform their lives every single day. That's the in their way. So if you want to get from here to here, make sure you subscribe to our channel, like the video and share your feedback in the comment section. And if you already knew all of that, welcome back. Welcome back. And today we actually have a very interesting experience to share with you. My, my personal experience and the title of this video is I got fired like twice. <laughs> Right. And it was a really sad experience and I don't want anyone to ever go through that. So that's why I'm making a video. First of all, share how I could have avoided, right? Be fired. And two, how you could avoid being fired. I remember when I started my career about four years ago. I left uni when? 2015? So I started working in 2016, right? I started my corporate job in 2016 and what I... What were you doing before that? I was in uni. <laughs> no, I mean like 2015 you graduated. I graduated, yeah, I finished August. So from August to like start of 2016, I was just interviewing, I think. Oh. I can't remember doing anything significant. <laughs> um, I interviewed at Apple, wow. but I, I was not going to do the whole standing up all day thing. Oh, at the Apple Store. Yeah, Apple Store, Apple not Apple Headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> and they, oh, actually, Apple. they actually gave me the job. Did they? But yeah, but at the time, I was interviewing for a corporate role in recruitment and they gave me an offer to me before that, before so, they got back to me. Apple got to ages to get back to me. Yeah, it was retail, but I could have my retail career in Apple, you know. I was inside, right at the top of my retail career at Apple. That was great. I remember that I got a text that called me and I was like, oh, we offered you the job, you know, excited to have me. I was like, oh, sorry, I can't find that. But <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> Anyway, I started in recruitment. Recruitment is really cutthroat, like most people know. But if you don't know, it's cutthroat, right? And I remember I joined the company. Obviously, I don't want to get sued, so I'm not going to say the name of the company. And it was going really well. I was performing really well. But then I started to realize that, you know, things were going down. Like, people were just leaving. But, but I was naive. I wasn't... I, I, I didn't think that it's just a super, like, volatile industry. Like, people leave all the time. Oh, really? I just thought the company wasn't doing well and that's why people were leaving. I didn't understand that people actually just move all the time. It's a it's normal... Where? People where? move to other companies. People really? move, yeah. People get recruited all the time. Recruiters move all the time. It's very rare to find a recruiter in the same role, same company for years, unless you're like a director and you have like, you know, equity. So at the time, it just didn't look good. People were leaving. I didn't really understand. I was naive. I didn't ask questions. How long were you there with it? Three, four months in or five months i would say i was doing really well i was enjoying it i was really enjoying this recruitment thing i was working hard etc anyway i decided to do the most stupid thing ever <laughs> i went to go and interview during my lunch time <laughs> don't do that ever do that i mean in a, in a virtual world today in a virtual world today you can right yeah and you don't have to travel across london you know on the central line to Austin service to go interview somewhere else which is what i did and you know it was stupid and then i came back and I was just like, I thought it was I was gonna make it. What made me think I was going to make it back on time when I have an yeah, hour's I really, lunch? I really don't. I was so really naive. I was so naive. So did they say that's the only time that they could meet you? Yeah, that was the only slot I had because they finished work, and the only time I could do it is when I finished work. There was no other way. It was your lifetime. <laughs> I might remember coming back. My manager asked me like, "Where the heck have you been?" And because at the time I was also a practicing Christian, I couldn't lie. I mean, at the time. At the time. Like, you're not that anymore. Oh. <laughs> I am, I am, I am. Yeah, so I, I, I was a practicing Christian and I'm still a practicing Christian. So I just knew I couldn't lie about this. Anyway, I told him the truth. I said, listen, I went to this other company called X. Can't say the name. You told him the I company. Told him the to yeah, I told him. Like, I was really open with him because he, he hired me. Like, I just felt like I had to be super honest. I was just a honest, honest Harry. Yeah, I remember we got into a room. He was fuming. He was fuming like fuming and then it just like. yeah it's just it was horrible it was a horrible experience so he took you to the room to ask you why you were yeah 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 just ask me like think about all the questions that you could have asked me why were you late where did you go why did like yeah oh, really? and i couldn't like i couldn't bluff or whatever anyway two months after that i was still at the company really i was still there okay. but from my first five months being amazing and the, like, it was great everyone was nice to my last two months being hell it was horrible because then the thing with criminal, like, you've almost like betrayed the tribe. Mm -hmm. You've betrayed you the tribe. Did really find out? Yeah, everyone, like if people knew, then they don't treat you the same. So it was a, just, I just had to bear a lot of things. Like a lot of the things that my manager wasn't doing to me when I was there, in the first period before I went into interview, he started doing like this really aggressive, you know, giving me like really hard things to do. Mm -hmm. Like it was 
horrible. Eventually, they decided that it just wasn't going to be a good fit for me anymore, and they got me to a room. And they told me, hey, Michael, like, we gotta let you go. But the good thing is they're at least trying to help me, like, set me up for a new job. Really? Yeah, it was nice. But the lesson from that is, of course, I like, always be transparent and be honest. But first of all, don't interview during your working hours. Well, why like, were you interviewing so soon? You're only three months. Because I thought I was going to, I thought the company was sick and I didn't want to sink with it. I was scared. I was just really scared. Anyway, well, especially when we come out of this COVID thing and, you know, we back, go back into offices, like, just don't do it to yourself, right? Just don't. The second of all... Well, any kind of appointment, unless you tell your manager that you have an that appointment. That you have an appointment, like, yeah, If exactly. he said that I have an appointment, he didn't need to go into the whole, it's an interview or this yeah. and that. It would have just been an appointment that he has over yeah. lunch. But he they would have asked. Everything. They would have asked me, man. They're not no, stupid. No, but you don't need to they're disclose not, they're all not, of that They're not your... stupid. Maybe it's because I just felt like they've hired me, they, they treated me so well. I'm that's what I'm saying. Like, most young professionals feel honest. like they need to tell your whole life story. Oh, Oh uh, yes, that's and a like good point. when you're making a, if you're making an appointment, you do not need to disclose everything about that said appointment. You get what I mean? Like, if you feel like you can, I mean, you can if you want to disclose, but don't feel like you have to disclose in order for them to let you, in order to prove that it's something worthwhile. Like, no, like, yeah, especially if it's in lunchtime, that's your time. So they can't really like, especially if you're gonna make it up to them, if you're gonna go over then make it up to them, but you, they don't need to know your, the ins and outs of your life outside of work, in your own time, or un, unless it affects your work, it shouldn't be disclosed, it doesn't need to be disclosed. Mm. You, you don't want to make that kind of environment where it's like, oh, I'll tell my manager everything as though they're my friend, or as though they're my, you know, mm. yeah, as though they're family member. They're not your friend, they're not yeah. your family member, you don't need to disclose all that, because that's what keeps that boundary that says, you know, you pay me to work for you or work with you, whatever phrase you want to use, what language you want to use. But it's not like, oh, you own me or we're friends like that. Yeah. Like, oh, you're my family member. So, you know, we're that close that you need to know my life. No, yeah. you don't need to know my life. You know what I want you to know. Boundaries. Yeah. And I just two things there on Washu for speaking, I thought I wanted to surface. One, don't be naive like me and always try to understand what's really going on right mm -hmm. so one express how you're feeling so if i at that time expressed that i was feeling insecure about my job i wasn't feeling stable i'm sure they would have helped me to address those concerns yeah they would have been like recruitment is kind of like this don't yeah. be afraid that other people are yeah. you know yeah. jumping ship or whatever like this it was it was happening exactly they would and, have explained and also i i should have asked questions i should have asked them what was going on you know, should I be worried? Should I? What does that mean for me? Like, please learn to start asking these kind of questions. It's important. Listen, like, when you join a company, you have to understand you're not their property. You're not their property, right? You're not their property. You are a valuable asset in yourself and you are there to add value. Yeah. They're not there to dictate your life, okay? So it's really important for you to understand this because you don't need to bend over backwards for anybody. Right? You set your standards, you set expectations, you control your destiny. Yeah. At the time I was young. Yeah. I was young. You're young. I didn't feel like yeah. I had any influence. I was just like, oh, I'm just coming here, I'm just gonna work hard, 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 like whatever. If they say jump, I'll ask how I learn this. It's not about that. <laughs> it's not about that. You're there to add value. You know the value you're bringing. Yeah. Um, As outlined in your contract, like it's an agreement that you've made that you're gonna put in this, this amount of work to, you know, help the company's bottom line. That's yeah. it, like that's all you need to do. Yeah. If you keep it simple like that, then you don't need to be exactly. afraid or be exactly. worried about all these other things. And plus, if those questions are gonna help you yeah. do your job, meet and meet the company's expectations to, you know, positively affect their bottom line, then they're gonna answer. And if you always think about okay, it will this question help me to do my job properly? Yeah, so ask yeah. the question. And and the second time I was fired. <laughs> you know what, yeah, and make the same mistake again so after I, I got fired right i got a job in like another two weeks you know for another company i can't name them and uh, the this one it's no different industry so i was in for financial services i went into pharmaceuticals right you know very fun i was like in charge of like the market the region they brought me on and blah, blah blah first of all the working environment was horrible i felt like i was literally working in a boiler room every single day it was like just dark and and I just felt I couldn't stop falling asleep. It? it was like somewhere like it was around King's Cross, oh. that area. The only thing I like about that company was like there was really good places to eat around. But mm -hmm. in terms of the company itself, like culture was, my manager was fine. But just in general, like I just didn't get 
it was literally like watching a boy room. Like, it's very dark, windows dark. I just felt like I was being indoctrinated. Anyway, um, I, I I just couldn't stop falling asleep. Really? Yeah, but that was probably because of the food I ate every lunch. <laughs> I was just always falling asleep and I would get in trouble and that was a problem that was really a problem like guys like honestly if you have like iron problems like iron deficiency problems like fix it like seriously fix, guys, it. fix it all right you don't want to be falling asleep at your desk like if well you, if you are doing that look into your you know yeah your look into health, it like yeah, look into go to bed earlier yeah look in, don't just oh it was know, an issue it was like, really serious like, it's a really it big might be underlying you know, genetical. Yeah, like I remember even the last company I got fired at, I used to literally go to the toilet and sleep there for 30 minutes. I had a serious sleeping problem because I was exhausted. I don't know why I was exhausted, maybe it's because I was having heavy lunches. But if you if this is a problem that you find and you fall asleep quite very quickly, please solve it. Anyway, that I wasn't I wasn't building a good Well look into it because it might not be solvable, man. Yeah, okay, it might fair be enough. a condition that they have. Maybe I have a condition then and I've not been really diagnosed with that. like she said. She's more politically correct. Yeah. <laughs> Looking for it. But I wasn't building my personal brand internally, right? Mm. So then the fateful day, I had a day off. Day I off. had a day off. When you have a day off, you can direct your emails that come in to your manager. Okay. My, now my email was connected to my LinkedIn inbox. Okay, right. Right? Now, the big problem I had was whatever LinkedIn messages I got, my manager saw. And then I was speaking to this guy, you know, these like network marketing things that people get like message you on LinkedIn for like get involved in them like okay, things that you yeah. can sell like I was just trying to build a side hustle in it oh. but my manager thought I was looking for a new job so he got this LinkedIn email that went to his inbox and it looked like I was generally a full conversation with this guy that was trying to recruit me and I was proper like entertaining it guys the next day I walked into the office I got called into a room Oh, this is just making oh, my no, skin actually crawl, and my heart feels so heavy. Oh my god! <laughs> I got called into another room, and they were like, "Oh, you know, you, we noticed that you've been talking to this guy. It shows that you know his lack of commitment. You know, committed to us." And then they gave me a piece of paper that basically said, "Yeah, you're fired." That's it. That no, it. they didn't do any investigation. No, your side of the story. No, no, no. I hate that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, no, no. I think they wanted to get rid of me because I was, I was falling asleep. So my personal brand didn't help. They were just like, this is just an opportunity you mean your to reputation. get rid of Michael. But it is part of your, your, personal, brand. your personal brand. Yeah. Is your reputation. So I was like always sleeping, you know, sometimes I'll come in late. I, I just wasn't great. I wasn't a great. I wasn't a great. Really yeah, I wasn't a great fit. And I was still young in my career, do you know what I mean? So I guess I was just testing the water to see if I can get away with it, but not intentionally. So why did you go for that pharmaceutical? Because stuff? they just had a good offer. They made me a good offer and I didn't want to be out of work for too long. So what you weren't looking for sports management? Nah, nah. Not to work at Arsenal. Nah, nah. That was long, man. That was long. Work. Nah, that was long. At any long. other stadium? Nah, that was long. Nah, nah. Because it wasn't. Management. It wasn't the right time. It wasn't the right time for so me. So you had your plan, and it yeah. wasn't to do it straight after uni. No, I, I had a plan, but my plan was more coaching, not necessarily the commercial side of sports. Yeah. So didn't you think like maybe you could get in by the back door? No, I didn't think like that. I didn't think it worked like that. Um, so I got fired from that job as well. So note to self again. First of all, don't direct your LinkedIn inbox to your manager's inbox. That is that was like the biggest mistake. You don't need to connect your LinkedIn because I work in sales, right? So it's important I do. But if you don't need to connect your LinkedIn to your actual work email, don't do it. Yeah, yeah. Don't Just don't do it. Like, yeah, and as I was, as I was saying, like, if you have Outlook or those kind of things or those kind of email things where it's like set up by the company, it goes to the company server, so there's always a way for your manager to find out. Which is why, like, they always say, don't be having personal conversations on your email. Yeah. Because even if you delete email, it or yeah. you delete the history, there's always some way that your managers can see it. Yeah. So yeah, just don't. Just be very careful. Yeah. If you need to, like if it's like emergencies or if it's not going to like look weird or dodgy, it's not going to incriminate you in any way, then fine. As long as there's no, there's no harm in it. But just to be safe because it is, they, they're going to try to say that, you know, it's their company resources, it's this, it's that. Yeah, like, all that it's, corporate job. It's at the time, it's, you know, it's, it's during work hours and yeah. all of this stuff. So you'll never be in the right. Yeah. You'll always be in the wrong. Yeah. So just like, you yeah, Using company resources to find yourself a job. Crazy. That was the last time I got fired, but I came pretty close again. Mm. Because when you work in sales, for most people, their probation period is three months. My probation has always been six months always been six months and Wait, in that six you, months for me just for you no 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 for oh, other you're making people, it like, no, 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 no 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 people that work in similar roles <laughs> <to me. laughs>
Did you get it? <laughs> Anyway, people that are working similar roles to me tend to have a probation period of six months yeah. or more, sometimes nine, right? Which is Whoa. horrible, by the way. And in That's that tense, and if and in that period, you have to hit oh. targets, you have to yeah. hit numbers, you have to hit like your sales targets, etc. And if you don't, your your position is tenable. Anyway, in my third job, I was actually there for two years, but I nearly was let go. I think for me. I built great relationships at that company and that's what kept me. They loved me. Like they really like my manager liked me, my team liked me. Same and I and I and I worked really hard. So my per, this way your personal brand can save you. Because even though you're not delivering against your sales target month after month, or you're not delivering against whatever deliverables you have month after month or KPIs you have month after month, building great relationships with your managers, with your team members, and being part of the culture and working your socks off, man. Like you did it like the job there was tough. It was tough. But I think two things saved me there, the relationships I built internally and my work ethic. Like that was one thing they couldn't deny, like Michael works really, really hard. I didn't hit my sales targets, right, all the time, but because I worked hard, they saw that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm an asset to the team, like I will always give my best, and my best will always be good. Yeah. And I became successful, but I left on my own terms. You mean in two years? Yeah, six months probation. Mm -hmm. I passed my probation because they saw the potential, and I ended up staying there for one year and eight months in total before I moved to my next role. And I left my head held high, you know, I made £100,000 for the company in cold business, and it was, it was a great experience. I learned a lot, and a lot of who I am today came from that experience, you know, mm -hmm. the tough side. Oh, guys. Oh, and I can't even go into it. That's another video. How to deal with managers screaming at you and treating you badly or treating oh, yeah. you. That's another video. That is another video. But anyway, <laughs> we will prepare for that maybe next week, right? But how do you deal with managers that essentially treat you like crap? Because I dealt with a lot of that in my career. My first job, I went through a lot of public humiliation. In my third job, I went through a lot of public humiliation. But that's another video for another day. And then I went into my company before, my current company. I was successful, I became a manager, but I also didn't meet their expectations because I didn't understand, I was comfortable. And this is the danger, when you're comfortable, you might subconsciously, do, but you, you, you start to slack. So I remember I got in so much trouble because I attended a meeting late. Things like that, do you get what I mean? They take things like that seriously. Like the person's on a meeting, they're waiting for you, five minutes, 10 minutes, and they have to message you be like, where are you? Mm -hmm. That was not good. I wasn't meeting expectations because I took on new responsibilities on marketing as well. I didn't really understand what the expectations were, but they don't fire you straight away. They put you on a plan for like three months. Like and in that, yeah, review. like a performance review. And in that, in that performance review, in that performance plan, we call it PIP, you go through a number of you have certain KPIs that you have to hit and at the end of that the review where you hit those KPIs and if you do then you continue your job as normal and if you don't then they let you go. If I didn't achieve those goals in the plan I would have been let go and my, my career might have been completely different and the trajectory of my career would have been completely different. So that's the lesson there like always understand what the expectations are. We preach this quite often to you and we always encourage you to understand what your expectations are, like what, is the, what are your deliverables and make sure those are clear. And if you don't understand it, ask questions. If, if you do understand it, ask more questions. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. So those are the lessons I wanted to share with you. But uh, yeah, 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 I had it down. Because of your personal brand. Yeah, because of my personal brand, because I worked hard and because I also knew, I understood the expectations very clearly. Mm -hmm. And I was making sure that everything I was doing every single day were aligning to those expectations. So. I, did, I didn't need three months, I needed a month. I changed my whole situation and my whole career around in one month. But as a young professional, it's like, how did you, how can you navigate all of that? Because I mean, you're straight out of uni. Yeah. You're looking for a couple of months and then you went into work, but you didn't know really what you were going to be doing when you were working mm -hmm. or like workplace culture, what you can do, what you can't do, unless, I mean, what you hear in the news or what you see in movies and stuff is not really the same. No. Like, until you get in there, you're not really gonna know. So what should we do? Just get there? Most most companies should have a pretty solid onboarding plan. So you understanding the culture, understanding the company, understanding the business, understanding the different teams in the business. So no one just walks into a role and you what just if get you're out longer it. than the onboarding. Well, onboarding usually should be taken like two to four weeks. What if you're a slower learner or you leave longer? I mean, you don't know, you get it that quick because you've just come to uni. That's the thing, but the onboarding. And now this is a whole different. An onboarding plan should be very simple for you to understand. It shouldn't be anything complicated. It should be very simple to understand. And usually, onboarding is this is what your job is, this is what the teams are, this is what the culture is, this is the tools that you use are, 
this is what the vision of the business is, this is how you align to it, like it's, it's pretty comprehensive. So you're saying if it's not a solid onboarding, then it's not You're going to struggle, yeah, yeah you're, you're going to struggle, struggle a little bit. But then it's not your fault that you're no, struggling. No, 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 no. But no. then you do need to voice that, yeah. like, not to say, the, oh, yeah. your onboarding was rubbish, like, you set me up to fail, kind of Yeah, thing. but most young, most young professionals would, they don't know what they're walking themselves into, so they don't even know what a good onboarding is like. No, but you know that if you're still feeling like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing or yeah, I don't know problem. what I'm expect what's expected of me yeah. or if it still feels like like if you're not confident at what you're supposed to be doing that's how you know that yeah. it wasn't a great onboarding because you, they yeah. should understand that you're I need to raise that you need to raise that with HR as well right that's what HR is there for you need to raise that with HR <laughs> well they need to know it's, it's their onboarding plan it's their, they create onboarding plan so if the onboarding plan is not adding value and it's not sufficient they need to understand that that's yeah, how they improve don't go to HR. To your but it will come to HR anyway. Let it go through your manager, not through you. Because <laughs> your manager but, will think that you won't behind their back. Mm, I, I don't know. That's a pretty to- that's a pretty toxic culture then. If if yeah, don't go to HR. Because yeah. you don't know what the, you don't know if that's okay. I mean, you're, well, that's another because conversation most, for another most day. Most young professionals, most graduates, because you're going to be a graduate, you're coming straight out of uni. I agree you with you. I think I think you, you should. Speak to I think you should be speaking to your manager. The, you don't know really what's the point until you don't really know who to trust. You don't really know if that company got your best interest. They should always have your best interest. Because you're just fresh. You don't really get to what you're supposed to be doing. You need to ask the necessary Then fine. Questions. Then ask your manager. Like your manager is your go-to person. So that's my advice for you. Yeah. Yeah. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you took loads of learnings from it. If you have if you've gone through what I've gone through, if you've been fired a couple of times, like talk to us, right? Yeah, if you've been finding it hard and challenging to navigate your career, you're right at the beginning stages, you might be a graduate, you jump onto a new job, or this whole working from home situation is just not what you thought it would be. Like, yes, reach out to us, we're here to help you. Absolutely. And we can answer your questions, we can steer you in the right direction. We're, we're there to listen about, because you know, like you don't really want to burden your friends with your work mm. and stuff. You don't really want to burden your family because they'll be concerned. So speak to us because I mean, like, yeah, it's safe. To Absolutely. Speak to Absolutely. Us about. Sounds good. We'd love to hear your feedback. Please comment below. We've got some big, 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 big things happening. If you don't know or haven't joined our Careers Climbers Collective, please see the link below and click on it. And we have our first ever virtual event called the Best of Me. Now all of that is going to be coming out pretty much this week so click the link below <laughs> just click the link below for everything yeah. if you want to subscribe to our newsletter click the link below all of that is always everything is below so yeah and if you want to just privately talk to us or book a wow talk we call it wow talk it's a free first consultation call with us to tell us about the story and where you want to go and how we can help you get there click the link below all right see you later bye bye, bye.